Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 118 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating an alternative treatment strategy for a large vessel perforation. The patient was an older woman with severe coronary calcification that was referred for PCI of a right coronary artery chronic total occlusion. Dual angiography showed an occlusion of the mid RCA with a side branch close to the proximal cap, length approximately 50 millimeters, good quality distal vessel that was feeling mainly via an epicardia collateral from the circumflex. Therefore, our plan here was to do undergrade wire escalation first, followed by retrograde through this epicardial collateral that did have quite some tortuosity so it wasn't the best collateral followed by undergraded sexual re-entry as a third option we obtained a right femoral axis with an eight french sheath and a seven french right radial axis with a seven slender sheath this is the dual injection in an rao projection and what we can appreciate here is that there is a blunt proximal cap with uh, two marginals essentially coming off at this location. Given the retrograde filling, the proximal cap appeared to be at the beginning of this blunt stump, so we went undergrade with a turnpike LP and the Gaia third guide wire. That did not make much progress, and we escalated to a Confianza Pro 12 guide wire that seemed to be tracking along the course of the vessel. We advanced the, the microcatheter slightly into that stump and then used a filter XT to knuckle. However, when we did the orthogonal projection, the LAO projection, we were in for a surprise. We can now see that the knuckle as well as the microcatheter are outside the vessel structure, so we have essentially perforation. And the question is what should the next step be? Unfortunately, what we did is what we should not have done, which is pulling back the microcatheter, because now it opened up that area of perforation that we have before, so we now have an Ellis class 3 perforation right uh, at the area of the proximal cap. Instead, what we should have done is leave the microcatheter in place, which would tamponade the perforation, and then uh, try to find some other ways to treat the problem. What next? There is the perforation algorithm. The very first step on any perforation is to inflate a balloon to occlude the distal vessel, which is exactly what we did. Then give fluids, do pericardiocentesis if the patient develops tamponade and hypotension, and notify the surgeons. In this particular case, we took a 2.5 millimeter balloon that did achieve hemostasis. We did a contralateral injection to ensure we didn't have retrograde filling, and indeed there was no retrograde bleeding through the perforation site. We did have the epicardial collateral, so given the situation, we attempted to cross through the epicardial collateral, and to our pleasant surprise, we had a fairly easy way advancing a Sion guide wire through the turnpike LP microcatheter all the way into the right posterior lateral and then into the posterior descending artery. Unfortunately, this was all done using left radial axis and at, during attempts to advance the wire to the distal RCA, we lost uh, our position and we had to start all over again. If you notice, we did have a safety wire into the LAD in case any problem happened in the donor vessel. And this is an example of what we like to call the chip R cases, which is the chip radial which is that when the procedure is made much more painful than it should be by use of radial approach, in this particular case, we do have uh, a difficult time getting support to deliver equipment in a setting of an emergency. And we want to avoid becoming the chip R square, which is really trying to do radial when things are clearly not working. In this particular case, we did change to femoral. We obtained left femoral axis, and then we used an 8 French EBU 3.5 guide catheter to engage the left main. Similar to before, we used the safety workhorse wire into the LAD, and we then used the microcatheter into the circumflex, and like before, we were actually able to relatively easily cross the epicardial collateral into the distal right coronary artery. We then knuckled a filter XT guide wire and were able to advance it all the way to the mid-RCA next to the already inflated balloon 
proximal to the side of the perforation. What we did next, uh, we should not have done, and this is uh, advance a Confianza Pro 12 wire, because what happened, as you can see here, is that the Confianza Pro 12 and actually the retrograde microcatheter went outside the vessel structure. So this example, we have an undergrade perforation, and now we clearly have a retrograde perforation as well. But I think what saved the case here is that there was an occluded segment and there was no retrograde flow through that area of perforation. We were then able to call to do what is called guideline a reverse card. We advanced a guide extension and then used it as the target for our retrograde pilot 200 guide wire and then externalized an R350. And after doing that, we realized that there was no residual bleeding around that area of perforation. And we were able to place three stands all the way from the distal RCA all the way to the proximal right coronary artery. And this resulted to a nice final result with a sealing of the perforation. There is no longer any extravasation at the area of the perforation. We did an intravascular ultrasound and there was uh, some area of under expansion. That is why we did more balloon inflations to optimize the lesion. We then uh, realized, however, that there was some dampening of the pressure and we did cause a small aortocoronary dissection. And those are usually not a problem as long as we realize that they're there and we avoid further injections. The number one thing is to not inject anymore and then get a stand and cover essentially the ostium of the coronary artery. This is a source stand going all the way from the aorta into the proximal right coronary artery that was deployed and then that was post dilated with an ostial flush balloon that essentially helps with a position of the stand struts more proximally. And this was the final result. To take better, more pictures, we actually inserted the guide catheter extension back to the proximal to mid-right coronary artery. And we did have a nice result with Timothy flow in the right coronary artery and successful sealing of the perforation. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that before one advances a microcatheter over a wire when we're trying to cross a CTO, it is imperative to check the wire location in two orthogonal projections to avoid what happened to us, which is the wire went out and then we advanced the microcatheter over the wire that had perforated. Second lesson is that if you end up doing that and now you have a microcatheter essentially outside the vessel, then the next step is not to pull back the microcatheter. Contrary to what the natural instinct is to just try to correct what happened, you want to leave the microcatheter there because that causes hemostasis and facilitates treatment. In this case, we pulled it out, but then we put a balloon up to stop the bleeding. And then to seal the perforation, we could have just coiled the vessel and stopped the flow, but that would have precluded any future attempts of uh, recanalizing that RCA. So instead, what we ended up doing is go retrograde and then used subintimal technique, the reverse cart, to essentially create a flap that sealed the perforation which had caused at the proximal cap. We did convert from radial to femoral, and this is another lesson that if one has difficulty with radial access, early conversion to femoral is important to get a nice final result. And last but not least, in cases of aortocoronary dissection that happened in this case, Standing the ostium and stopping injecting can provide uh, a good result and prevent propagation of the dissection. Thank you.